So Lucky's got a really bad rap about being completely untrainable dogs and so being um, a Saluki owner I want to discuss this issue today and I just want to say straight away yes it's really really hard to train Saluki like I, I, there is no way I'm gonna disagree with the fact that it's really really hard to train a Saluki. So if you are looking for a breed that's uh, very easy to train, very very easy like to just be with and who picks up things just like basically reading your mind um, so Luki is not for you definitely definitely not but I just really want to push back to the idea that Salukis are completely not trainable because that's just not true it's not true guys it's not true Salukis can be trained Salukis can be trained please hear me out <laughs> Um, so I run agility with my Saluki, I've dabbled a little bit in the obedience rally with my Saluki and I would be doing more of the obedience rally if I had more time but I just want to dedicate more time to like my business and to the dog agility and that's the reason why I'm not doing dog obedience rally but I would be doing it still with my Saluki and it was so much fun guys it was so much fun and it's so incredible to run with your saluki agility like come on agility saluki it's amazing hard but amazing let's talk about the facts why are saluki so hard to train and why do people often think that they are completely untrainable so the biggest issue with Salukis in my mind is that they are not food motivated. Even if your Saluki takes treats, which doesn't happen always, um, they won't die for them. They won't jump off the cliff for them. Not that I would ask my dog to jump off the cliff, but you know, there is that type of the dog who will do anything for a treat. Saluki is not one of them. Saluki is farthest away from that type of dog and uh, so yeah it's really hard to train a dog that's not food motivated and sometimes with Saluki you can get really really unlucky and you got not only not food motivated but also Saluki who's not eating at all like I don't know what sort of alien dogs are they but they can live without food for in in incredible amounts of time and they decide that on the on their own like i'm really lucky so um lamora isn't a picky eater i he eats his every dinner he's asking for his dinner and he also really likes treats uh, but on the other hand it's not like he likes every type of treat and it's also not like he'll take a treat in every situation like he if he's stressed he sometimes won't take a treat if uh, something if something takes away his attention he won't take a treat for me and uh, sometimes he just doesn't like the treats and so i've experimented around and found the favorite treats you can uh, check uh, this video i have some really really delicious duck treat uh, recipes there that uh, my saluki proves but the thing is you need to be really creative with your treats and with your rewards and I think that's one of the biggest hurdles for training Salukis. Now another thing actually depends on what do you mean when you say to train Saluki. Do you mean like for agility or house train or maybe do some tricks because those are very very different things and uh, so there are different levels that uh, how hard will you find it for example Lamora was exceedingly easy to house train like basically at six months age he had zero accidents in house and as you know I haven't had any since but on the other hand uh, when he gets stressed uh, he can sometimes poop in the agility course so but that's a stress thing and uh, yeah Salukis get stressed really easily but uh, then again like if you want to train Salukis for uh, tricks it can be done it can absolutely be done there are some people out there who are doing that i know that in uh, usa there are those trick titles and there are several salukis who have been titled in tricks um, if you want to do agility yeah it gets really hard i can tell you like it's not an easy going hello mio another reason why people might say that uh, salukis are not trainable is uh, off leash walks and uh, being off leash with saluki <laughs> look it can be done okay i'm doing it almost every week when i can i'm doing it every week and uh, 
even more often than once per week. And I think it's really important for any dog to be off leash. But uh, Salukis have very, very strong prey drive. And so maybe some people might not have an access to a super like a safe uh, forest or safe meadow or safe beach where your Saluki might be off leash. But it's also not like you can't train your Saluki to be off leash. Yeah, I understand that not everyone has the options and the super safe places. I know that I'm privileged in this regard, but I also work my ass off to really, really train my Saluki's recall. And I always take treats with me and I always take a, some sort of toy and there are things like actually the, the whole being off leash with Saluki is a video is a separate theme for a sub, separate video so I'll just leave it off this video and I'll talk about it separately because like it's a very long conversation I don't want to like uh, go babbling about it in in this video so let's return to the like general how like how hard is it to train Saluki another reason why Saluki is get, get a bad rap for being untrainable is that they're often really really sensi sensitive uh, to the point where maybe strangers can touch them or maybe if you lift your hand too quickly like waving at someone your saluki will be afraid but that's not actually a really common occurrence salukis can actually have a really stable temperament for example, I'd say that I'm really lucky with Lamora's temperament. There are almost no issues apart from the fact that he's like super, super submissive to the other dogs. And he also gets really excited by other dogs. So it gets harder for me to work with him if there are other dogs around. Uh, like especially other stranger dogs that he has never met before. But I wouldn't say that all Salukis are super sensitive and actually that really depends on uh, how much uh, proper so socialization you put uh, into your puppy once you get him. And it doesn't only mean like uh, going and like, I don't know, allowing 100 people to pet him. It's more about uh, teaching your puppy confidence to be on uh, different surfaces, to, to be okay with different situations, to walk with you in different situations like um, one of the things that Salukis tend not to like are uh, moving surfaces and uh, that's uh, one thing that I'm working with Lamora right now he likes them now he does not and um, that actually brings me to another point Salukis can get spooked really easily and that can actually ruin a lot of the training you've done for example with Lamora since the first day I started agility with him, like I started agility with him like when he was what five, six months old, something like that, after I finished the puppy school. And uh, so from the day one with my trainer, we knew that the Salukis tend to have like problems with seesaws and agility. And so from the day one, that was our number one priority to teach him to be okay with seesaws. And we took baby steps like half a baby steps, quarter of a baby steps. We were super careful and we had built such an amazing confidence for him. He was so amazing. He was going on the seesaw. He was laying down and there were no problems with seesaws. I can tell you that zero problems until that one stupid, stupid, stupid day when we went into agility hall, there were new obstacles like the seesaw and the dog walk were changed to different uh, colors and uh, so I was sending Lamora to CISO and he was mistaken in his mind he thought that he's going to the dog walk instead uh, and so he did, doesn't, didn't realize that it's a CISO and he didn't realize that it will fall down midway and he got really spooked because uh, well he got to the middle of the CISO it fell down um, he jumped off he like he went to flying all over the place he wasn't hurt or anything he didn't even fall I don't know hard on the ground or anything he didn't hit himself nothing else happened he just got spooked and that's it from that day he's not stepping on the CISO and I've spent what a uh, year and a half working on the issue and he's still not stepping on the seesaw so that's one thing about Saluki is that uh, yeah you can spook them they can get spooked really easily it's nothing that I did I did nothing wrong this is just 
one of those terrible situations it happened i can do nothing about it at the moment the motor was simply mistaken and well i have to deal with the consequences well that happens and with salukis it maybe happens a bit more than with your usual dogs i don't know i don't have that much to compare i have only a crazy terrier at home so in general salukis are not food motivated they can be sensitive and they can be easily spooked and their like general gene buildup just isn't hasn't included the fact that they really really want to work with a human but on the other hand they're like really attached to one human and so with that one human they'll be wanting to do more and i'm not the only one who is running agility with saluki i'm not the only one who has tried to dog obedience with saluki so there are those people out there who can do that and it's not actually that we are super super lucky with our salukis like yes i i do consider myself to be lucky with lamor and he's from the coursing kennel and stuff but it's not like your average saluki can do that it just takes a lot of work a lot of creativity and um, so i get really really sad when i see that people say oh you can't train saluki to do anything uh, basically just coach potatoes and that's about it it's just incredibly sad because those are such powerful dogs that can do so much if you just put the work in him her your dog your saluki and uh, I, I i don't want to end on this really really sad note about oh you know saluki can do that and can do this but uh, super sensitive dogs which to some people might sound really terrible but uh, i just want to say like if you if saluki is really your breed if you can really understand your saluki if you really connect with him you can find ways to work with your saluki it takes some creativity it takes looking for a trainer who will really work with you and who will really look at the dog in front of you and who will work with that exact dog instead of some stereotypes about dogs or stereotypes about uh, salukis in particular and so you might need to find that one really really tasty crazy crazy tasty treat for your dog for you might find like he's crazy for this one particular toy and uh, you know knowing that it's a saluki it's um, that toy maybe looks like some small dead animal you know whatever works and uh, you maybe need to build more confidence you maybe need to work in a, like a less stressful environment so i have to do more work with lamora at home where he feels really comfortable and only then try to translate those skills to some more uh, difficult environments you need sometimes to give more time them to just adapt and we get used to new spaces and uh, new stuff new people and uh, sometimes you just need to have a sense of humor because i, I i'm not gonna tell you that your saluki will be 100 percent predictable if you just put enough work in him uh, that might never happen but also you just need to realize that salukis grow up very very slowly they mature extremely slowly and so depending on the, with whom you talk uh, most people would say that salukis are adults only around somewhere when they're three years old and so in general for dogs you would consider your dog to be adult around a year or a year and a half but for salukis three years is basically the first marker where, where you would even consider that dog an adult and so that's the first point where you would consider like oh he's maturing and you can do more stuff and he's calming down all the teenage bloopers are going away and so yeah you need a lot of patience to work with your saluki and um, you also need to understand that uh, well not every training session will go your way like for example this one agility training it was kind of going my way and then suddenly in the middle of the course Lamar decided okay bye i'm leaving bye i'm done okay cool i'm done and yes Lamora has run away from the agility course on the competitions 
and that's for, why I started agility competitions only in the indoor spaces. I didn't want to risk uh, to go to the outdoor competitions with him. And so, yes, there are all sorts of safety measures that you need to take, all sorts of things that you need to plan, all sorts of contingencies. But it's not like it can be done. And I know it sounds a lot. I know, I know, people. Come on, I know, it sounds crazy. And when I tell other people, like the level that I'm working with my Saluki, people do tend to consider me crazy. And uh, actually, I consider myself crazy, but what does that matter? We all know it's true. Um, but, it, it, but the thing is, because Saluki, but the thing is, because I love him so much, because I understand him so much because I connect with his thinking in such a level where I, I see myself a lot in him. It's not hard for me to do all those things. I find them easy. I find it easy to train my Saluki despite all the work I have to put into him. Just because, well, Salukis are my breed. I love Salukis. I absolutely adore every little bit about them. And that's why it gets easy. And so, I guess in this video, I just wanted to say that if you're looking at Salukis and you feel like they are really your breed, but you're afraid from other people who are saying that you won't be able to train your Saluki, um, maybe you need to consider that maybe if you really click with your Saluki, maybe it won't be hard for you. There are so many crazy, amazing, amazingly trained Salukis out there. Salukis are running Canicross, Salukis are running Agility, Salukis are doing all those amazing tricks and doing obedience and obedience rally. And I just don't know how many more proofs you need that Salukis can be trained. It's just really, really hard. And really, really hard isn't always the... It's not the worst thing in the world. It can be done. While well, I'm the first to tell you that it's incredibly hard work. It takes a lot of work, a lot of nerves, a lot of sense of humor. And so I, I'm not going to tell you to just recklessly jump in and get a Saluki. You have to really, really understand into what you are going into but i'm just saying like if you have that gut feeling that saluki is really your breed if you have met salukis and you're just feeling that connection um i'm telling you to disregard the haters i don't know i had to do that when people get to know like uh, four, four years ago when I started talking about the fact that I'm going to bring Saluki in my family, uh, people weren't positive <laughs> around that fact. Like especially in the agility community, people came to me and tried to talk me out of that because they thought, oh my god, I'm completely crazy and uh, I, I won't be able to manage my Saluki. And well, they were right on the first point, but I don't know, I, I, I feel like my Saluki is uh, manageable. I feel great living with him. We are having so much fun together. And so there is this balance. It's hard. It's hard work. It takes a lot of work. But it's also amazing. And so yeah, I guess if you are considering Saluki and if you are afraid about this part, you really, really need to think it through. Talk with people who have Salukis, talk with people, people who have multiple Salukis with multiple temperaments. Because uh, I'm basing this on my Saluki, my friend's Saluki, and maybe some information I've had from talking with other people. I, I don't have that much experience with Saluki, I'm just talking about what I'm seeing. But um, what I'm seeing is that, yeah, you can train your Saluki if you're creative and hardworking enough. And um, so that's my point for today. If you really, really think that Saluki is your breed, go get your Saluki train your ass off with him, be creative, and I wish you a great life with your Saluki. Thank you for watching this maybe slightly rambly video till the end. Uh, like it if you find it beneficial, uh, leave a comment below what you would like uh, for me to talk again next time, maybe in next month, and I'll see you next week.